Hello and welcome back to Bump Love. In our last episode, we were talking about family mental health during a pandemic and how we're coping personally. And this episode, we have a guest. I'm Dr. Ampamiz Emmanuel. I'm a psychiatrist. I'm also a lecturer. I teach mental health and related subjects at Guru University. I practice privately in, around, in and around Kampala. Many places, safe places, Uganda, Children's Clinic, Nalia, to mention but a few. I'm also an active, I'm trying to see if we can spread the cause for better awareness on mental health. So I'm active on social media, plus things like this, like the interview we are doing right now. Um, I'll start off with our first question, which is, can you paint a picture of what the family's mental situation is like, especially in this second wave of the pandemic? Uh, so right now things are a little complicated actually a new thing it hasn't happened before people are locked down many are closed schools are closed offices are closed so people spend their whole day at home people are passing on and you're not allowed to go and attend a vigil you're not allowed to offer support you're not allowed to 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 go and the the things that we used to do in the past so the situation in the home now is really tense we always get clients coming in the most common thing happening now is anxiety people are anxious they don't know when this is going to end, if, if there is a solution in sight. They don't know what the government is going to do. They don't know what themselves they can do. There is this whole information from social media, information from mainstream media, telling them this, now mix onions with eggs, and uh, I don't know, don't get vaccinated, get vaccinated. So there is a lot of confusion and anxiety right now. I was talking to a teenager just a few days ago and i asked i asked her where do you see yourself five years from now her answer shocked me she told me you know i don't know where i will be five years from now in the past i would be able to answer you very well but right now i don't know because the schools are closed i don't know when it's supposed to be open i'm supposed to be in two classes ahead but i'm still in the same class so that is the situation that we're in right now um thanks for that um doctor um so so given that background and you've clearly explained to us what um, this health is. So we just wanted you maybe to give us an overall picture of what mental health looks like in homes, in families right now, given the pandemic, and what one can do as a parent or a guardian or an adult in the home to preserve their mental health. So the first thing is being aware that psychological distress occurs. You have to know that Whereas physical illnesses like malaria and this COVID thing and typhoid and whatever exists, they affect the body. You have to know that there are also certain conditions that can affect the mind. So your mind can also stop being well. It can get certain conditions. When things like this come in, so, so you have to be aware that they exist. So when you begin to notice certain symptoms, like for malaria, whenever you get a fever, you know that I may be getting malaria. So for psychological distress, whenever you get things like poor sleep, you're feeling general body X, tiredness, irritability, low mood, sad mood. You can't seem to find pleasure in whatever you're doing. Then don't think that you're suffering from COVID or malaria or whatever. Suspect that you're suffering from a psychological illness. As I mentioned, the most common right now is anxiety. So you have to be aware of these things. The, the, the next thing is working towards actively bettering your, your, your psychological health. So one of the things we encourage are things like exercises. So in the morning and in the evening, many of the people now, many of us are, are locked down and can't move about. But you can set aside an hour or two in the morning, you move around. Even in the evening, you, you take another walk. Plus other things that you can do to refresh your mind. You can play board games, you can read a book, something to keep your mind engaged and like to, to uplift your mood. Um, doctor, I wanted to ask mental health, um, or the lack of it can be very difficult to point out. It can be subtle. It manifests in really subtle ways. How do you think families can tell that maybe a child in the family is struggling or a partner in the family is struggling? What are the telltale signs that somebody is struggling with their mental health? Um, how do you know now that I need help? I need to reach out to a counselor or I need to reach out to a therapist. So the, the first thing is for them to be aware that psychological distress or psychological illness exists and to know the basic symptoms of these illnesses. Like how you know a fever is for malaria, you should know that a sad mood is for depression. You should know that 
anxiety or, or, or being unable to relax is for anxiety you should know that engaging in in in, in things excessively is a sign of addiction and then psychosis is when someone loses touch with reality they, they may for example tell you that i'm hearing people talking but other people in the room cannot hear those people who are talking so you know that this person is displaying signs of psychological distress so you have to know the conditions J- just roughly know the conditions and then after that you actively look out for them so observe your loved ones ob- observe your children see if your child is not playing like he used to play see if he's sleeping too much or if he's sleeping too little notice if he has stopped playing with his friends if he doesn't want to engage in family activities if you've seen him overtly crying if he's not playing if he's not uh... so usually a drastic change in what they have been doing in the past it may start slowly but usually it increases so when you notice things like this don't rush in the problem we have been getting is that the hospitals are already burdened with covid but people who have psychological distresses are also going there what can we do to comfort others in this time you know when we can't easily get to be as a community with them yeah you've stated it right Africans were communal people. People around Uganda are really communal people. The other day I witnessed an event which almost broke my heart. So someone had lost a loved one and because of COVID we had gone to to attend the vigil. Because of COVID first of all we were very few, we were not more than 10 people there. And then we, we could not what happened is that he was telling a story of how he used to love this person and the things we could do and he started shedding tears. In the past this would be have been a great moment to you know reach out to the person and maybe give them a hug or a pat on the back but now we had to 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 observe from a distance observe as someone is crying from a distance it was really heartbreaking even for me i felt like eh, eh, th- things have changed but the, the 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 way to deal with this new normal now is being there so if you can't be there physically that hug you no know, go, go and attend you're not breaking you know if you're not breaking the sops and whatever go and attend and be there physically for that for that person when you say that the most common question which comes in is what do i say someone is grieving someone is distressed what do i say you don't have to say anything just you being there physically will help the other thing is you can give the person a, a phone call if you're not able to be there and the phone call still doesn't have to be about those things so you're calling someone telling him i'm sorry you you lost this and this and this no you can just give the person a call and you you talk about other things not specifically the sad event that has happened and then something which is also coming into favor things like emails and letters and the, just being there for the person i think is a way we can help to de- to deal with this this these conditions thank you so much um we out i have um you know just knowing all of these things really does help help us during um this period but i think one of the fundamental things that you talked about was finding um help and now you've realized you've recognized that someone in your family is going through something maybe your child or even yourself where where can someone um find help where can someone find help during if they do realize that they have a problem okay so the, the the first thing is families themselves are able to help so you as a parent you're able to help your children at home you as a husband or you as a wife you're able to help your spouse you just have to look out for these conditions or signs of these conditions and address them the good thing is that they usually present when they are minor and just at home you can address them so going for a walk every day or preparing some nice food or sitting down and playing a board game or having a conversation can help many of these 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 conditions to to go away you don't need any magic if however it becomes too much then you may need help from the professionals so the first thing is that every government hospital has a mental health prof- a mental health professional the only problem is that when we go there to seek for help sometimes you, you 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 go to the wrong place so you go and then you mention i'm having stomach pain and diarrhea instead of mentioning i'm having psychological distress if you were to mention that they would point you to the right direction so every government facility has the capacity to help you second to that we also have our private facilities they also have now people who work there so people like psychologists psychiatrists you can counselors you ask for them and you'll be able to 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 get them 
been what an insightful insightful session i also love the fact that you were extremely like you gave us like the real pointers there's no this here and about and we are so glad we now know how to recognize if we have a problem we now know where to go in case we have a problem and we also now know how to cope um, with what we are going through right now. Um, one of the things that I have learned over the last few periods as a person that has suffered with my mental health uh, for a long period in my life is that it can affect anyone, um, even the strongest of us, especially the strongest of us. It really does affect us. And so um, please find help if you need the help. Um, for those of us that are Christian, go to God. Have somebody to speak to. Um, but you have to find help and you have to find where you can go. And with that, would like to appreciate everybody that has called on to other people. Take the time during this week to speak to someone who could be going through something. Speak to business owners, speak to parents, speak to children, speak to someone that might be going. Now is the time to enter their inbox, say hello, hope you're safe, praying for you, and all of those nice things that we as a communal people know how to do. We can't wait to see you in our next episode. Until next time, with love from Bump Love.